If you think that the atomic bomb is the most powerful and destructive weapon ever created by man, think again. Because unfortunately, we made it stronger, much stronger. In 1942, a group of scientists in Los Alamos began working on the world's first atomic bomb under the Manhattan Project, and in 1945, the first atomic bomb test was carried out. I leave our video about the Manhattan Project above. On paper, he planned to end the Second World War and all the wars that followed. But of course, it was the opposite. Before long, the Russians made their nuclear bomb. The Americans built a larger bomb in response. The Russians then made a bigger bomb, bigger, bigger, bigger. In that case, there are around 13,000 nuclear warheads in nine countries of the world, and a madman can press a button at any moment and start the Third World War, or rather, the apocalypse. I now return to the question I asked at the beginning of my speech. What's more powerful than an atomic bomb? Answer, thermonuclear weapon namely the hydrogen bomb. Although the hydrogen bomb may seem like an atomic bomb at first glance, its working principle is diametrically opposite. The average hydrogen bomb is hundreds or even thousands of times more powerful than a standard atomic bomb. I want to give an example. To detonate the hydrogen bomb, you need to use the atomic bomb as a trigger. Here in today's video, I will tell you the history of the most powerful and destructive weapon humanity has ever developed. Before talking about the hydrogen bomb, it is necessary to tell the difference between them. The fission phenomenon used in nuclear power plants and atomic bombs today is to split large nuclei. I would like to briefly talk about the fission phenomenon. Atoms of radioactive elements such as uranium and plutonium are very large. That's why they're so unstable and unstable. If you bombard these large atoms with neutrons, these neutrons will begin to break apart and destabilize these atoms. These disintegrating atoms create a massive reaction, and a significant amount of heat and energy is released. You can also use this energy to kill millions, or you can use it to generate electricity in nuclear power plants if you want. In fusion, the situation is the opposite. In fusion, you force light elements such as hydrogen to fuse at high pressure and temperature, and during this transformation, terrible energy is released. The famous British astrophysicist Eddington discovered in 1921 that the energy source of stars is fusion. According to him, the stars were using hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe, as fuel. Hydrogen was forced to turn into helium under the influence of the high pressure and temperature in the center of the stars, and its energy was released. In the following years, many laboratory studies on fusion were carried out, and in the 1930s, scientists such as Hans Bett began to make some claims that fusion could be used for military purposes. Many scientists were impressed by these claims. One of these people was Edward Teller, Although there were some problems with Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer and Teller were good friends until the 1950s, and according to the scientific community, while Oppenheimer was an oppressed man, Teller was the opposite. He was a pacifist who opposed the development of nuclear weapons, not completely excluding Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer wanted to build his team and continue his work, because the wires designed the bomb of that period according to the fusion principle. But Teller believed that a greater response and the spread of powerful weapons would make the world a safer place. Therefore, differences of opinion arose between them. Teller decided to focus on the development of the hydrogen bomb based on the principle of fusion. However, this posed not only a physical challenge, but also a great ethical challenge. The power of the hydrogen bomb would be one of the greatest destructive forces humanity has ever seen, and its use posed serious threats to the future of humanity. At this point, the friendship and cooperation between Oppenheimer and Teller also came to an end. Teller left the Manhattan Project at Los Alamos to continue working with his team and focused on developing a larger and more powerful weapon, the hydrogen bomb. The first hydrogen bomb test was conducted in 1952, and the result was dire. The explosion pushed the boundaries of the world, releasing an energy far beyond the estimates. After this point, the Soviet Union entered the race to develop the hydrogen bomb, 
and during the Cold War, the two superpowers struggled to increase the number and power of nuclear weapons. This process has become a dangerous race that will determine the fate of the world, and the world seeks protection from the devastating consequences of nuclear war. At this point, international agreements and negotiations began to be made for the containment and limitation of nuclear weapons. The Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, NPT, was signed in 1968, and many countries gave up having nuclear weapons. However, there are still countries that have nuclear weapons and are modernizing them. Today, great efforts are underway to prevent the proliferation of nuclear weapons, to keep nuclear weapons under control, and to establish trust in international relations. The use of nuclear weapons remains one of the greatest threats to humanity's existence. Therefore, the international community must work together to find a solution to this issue. As a result, the hydrogen bomb went down in history as one of the most powerful and destructive weapons ever produced by humanity. In hopes of a peaceful future for humanity and a nuclear-free world, it is important to make efforts to prevent and contain the proliferation of such weapons. This is humanity's shared responsibility, and we need to work together to leave a safer world for future generations. Hope to see you in the next video.